In this guide, we're going to walk through building out a login component. Now, I want to make one quick caveat before we dive into the code, and that is that in a normal application, typically I will have a single auth component, so one component that functions as both the login and the registration component, because as you're about to see, they are very similar, and the entire point of using tools like React is to be able to have shared code so that you can say, okay, I want to have a authentication component, but I want it in one case to work like a login component, and another case, I want it to work like a registration component, and that's the normal process. However, this is a tutorial and the end goal of this entire course is to have a application where you can literally go and just reference it, copy and paste code, implement it in your own application so that you can very quickly implement authentication. And so with that in mind, I don't want you having to go through a checklist or go through and having to check, okay, is this part of the registration feature or the login feature? I just want to have two standalone components and then you on your own side you can combine them if you want both or in many cases many of the applications I build out are admin based interfaces and so for that I don't even have a registration component in that case I only have a login feature and so because of that that is a reason why I'm structuring it that way just as a little caveat because for best practice in react usually this would be a single shared component so let's get started. I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code here, and you're going to see how similar these components are, because I'm going to start off just so we don't have to write all the boilerplate code by copying the registration component and then pasting it in and just changing it from registration to login. And now that we have that, now we can customize this. So it's no longer called registration, now it's called login, and a few key differences. We don't have a password confirmation, and then if you do want to have any error checking, I'll keep this in place so that you can reference it. And I'm just going to call it login errors. The functions we're going to use for handle submit and handle change are going to be exactly the same. So the, that the handle change function doesn't even have to change whatsoever. It simply is updating the state and its dynamic, which is one of the nice things about it. Handle submit, this is going to change a little bit. We no longer have a password confirmation. And then localhost 3001 is no longer calling registrations, it's calling sessions. So that URL is changing. It is still a post request though, so that part's not going to change. And then here we are not pulling in the password confirmation. We're only passing the user object with the email and password. Okay, so let's test this out. So before we get into calling a parent prop or anything like that, I first want to take a look at what the response from login is so that we know how to structure the data and how to pass it back up. So that's going to be the response from login. I'm going to just, just for best practices, just so we can reference this, this is going to be a login error if a login error occurs. And then we can go pull out our password confirmation here and then change the button to say login hit save now and let's call this from the home component so if you come down to registration right below registration start typing in login if you have auto import it'll automatically import it in and we won't pass in any props right now for right now we just want to see what that console log statement looks like if you come back to the site and view localhost 3000, you'll see we now are calling this other login component. So, so far so good. And let's first create an account that we know exists on the server. So for this one, I'm going to use jordan at devcamp.com and I'll just do jordan ASDF. I don't believe I've created that account. I'll throw in an extra one there just to make sure it's unique and let's register the user. Okay, that worked, so we are registered. That email address works. And now, 
I have the console open. If I type in that email address and this password and type login, we get a response from login. We get data, which says status created, and then we get the user. So everything here is working perfectly. Logged in is true. So all of that's working nicely, and we can actually even structure all of our data the same ways with our registration. So that is nice. If you come back, we can get rid of console log and say if response data status equals and then take a look we have status equals created the other thing you could do you could say if data logged in so instead of status change this to logged in and if we say that that is true and if you really want to simplify it you can just say if response data logged in just like that. Then we want to handle successful auth, pass in the response and the data. So everything there is really nice and clean. We can check to see if the user is logged in. And now we need to go and pass this prop from the home component. So in home, I'll say handle successful auth equals this dot handle successful auth. If you go and reference that, that's going to handle the login. So it's going to call the parent component and then it's going to push the user to the dashboard. So hit save there. And now we should be able to have all of this working. So I'm going to take this same account here. Oh, and it looks like I, I hit paste. So I lost that one. So let's just test this out with a different account. I'm just going to quickly create a new account, ASDF, and let's give it a two. Hit register, that worked. And now if I try logging in and hit login, that is now updating it. It's updating our state. It redirected us. And you can see we didn't really have to write a lot of code. So that is how you can build a full login component. And now we have the ability to have both a login and a registration process built directly into the system. So in all of this in place in the next guide, we're going to be able to see how we can check whenever the app loads, we can check to see if the cookie is in the browser and see if the user is authenticated. And if so, we will automatically update the login state.